Australia. I'm here today with John Stewart, a very well-known figure across the world. Um, what are you doing up here? Why are you on the hill? What brings you here today? Back with John again. John and I, uh, 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 John was nice enough to have me on his program a couple times. He's been behind uh, the 9-11 um, uh, Health and Compensation Act, called the Droga. Um, fortunately, because of his help back in um, 2015, uh, we were able to put together a bill uh, that had um, health benefits covered uh, for those that are uh, sick from their time at the Trade Center. Yeah, first of all, this is John Field, Kenny Speck, and Richard Palm, um, all 9-11 first responders, all down on the pile, and uh, have all been, I mean, John runs a, a group that without him and, and the Feel Good Foundation, of which uh, Richie and Kenny are part of, I think there's a Droga Act and uh, the Victim Compensation Fund never would have come to pass. And I think it's it's their tenacity and lobbying is, is really what helped this come through, and, and Mikey too. Um, and so now the VCF has expired, and people are being notified that uh, it hasn't expired yet, but the funding is being slashed. And that bill plans us for 75 years. Unfortunately, the compensation portion of the bill uh, was only a five year uh, that's getting set to expire in December of 2020. And the special master of the bill has stated that uh, as it stands right now, uh, they don't have enough money left uh, to pay the compensation claims that are coming. Um, so, again, we're back here with John, John Field, the team that he puts together uh, to see if we can get the second part of the bill, uh, which is the compensation portion, extended. And so, we're trying to lobby to get the funding. Uh, refurbished and to have the VCF bill extended through the life of this Joker. Now, are you all seeing bipartisan support here at all? Uh, I, is I this, think uh, so. you know, I mean, this sounds like an issue that both sides can kind of get behind. Uh, are you all seeing that, or is it is it kind of a left leaning issue right now? Right, right, left. People dying of cancer. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, has no leaning. Uh, which right? It affects Democrats and Republicans. So. Yeah. We're independent liberal Republicans, conservative Democrats today. We don't care what you are, just don't be an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I respect that. We get a lot of that done. <laughs> I respect a lot of other uh, the members here. Now, were you also a first responder on 9-11? I was a 9-11 responder. Where were you on 9-11? Um, I was at a job site. I responded the next day. Yeah. These guys are first responders. Uh, they're cops and firefighters and construct correction officers. Um, but I got hurt before they got sick. And I started a foundation um, knowing that people would get sick. And the federal government finally caught up to um, me doing this for 15 years. These guys, uh, they were bored, they were sick, they were dying, and they joined me. Now, I understand you were a first responder at 9-11. Where, can, you, can you tell us where exactly you were on that awful day? Where were you? Well, I got to the Trade Center about 1.30 in the afternoon. I was a New York City firefighter assigned to a police engine company, um, and I drove myself down there uh, from Shea Stadium. We had a uh, uh, we had a meeting area, a designated meeting area, Shea Stadium. Uh, and they were kind of trying to do a roll call and put together some teams and put them on a bus and send them down to the trade center. That never happened, so I uh, I literally just took my gear, I put it in the in the car, and uh, I went out to Grand Central Parkway over the Triborough Bridge. Manhattan and down the West Side Highway. I got there about 1.30 in the afternoon. God bless. Uh, wonder, who are some of like, the senators you're here to see? I mean, everyone, this is obviously, a, well, in my opinion, bipartisan. Um, I mean, are you meeting with... So, we picked, John put together the uh, list of who he thinks, who he thought uh, was the Republican leadership, uh, who he wanted to get um, a little feedback from. So, we met with uh, Marco Rubio. We met with uh, Lamar Alexander from Tennessee. Uh, and we met with uh, Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. So we look at them as as the lead, um, so to speak, of the Republican Party on the Senate side. So those were our three meetings today. Uh, we're wrapped up. They're just doing some interviews. Uh, we have a press conference uh, scheduled for 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, where the members of the House of Representatives are going to introduce the bill uh, and send it to the Senate and see if the Senate can't get on board. So. Those are our meetings today uh, with the uh, Republican leadership in the Senate, and uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow. What was the response like from those senators that you met with earlier? Well, we didn't actually meet with the senators. Uh, they were all flying in. Of course. Uh, this is their travel day. Uh, we met with their chiefs of staff. They can't speak for the senators, but like you said earlier,
it's our hope that they can look at it as a bipartisanship issue, uh, something that um, they don't have any fear if they get behind going back to their districts or their states, in this case with the senators, and um, looking bad. Um, I think it's a national issue. In fact, I know it's a national issue. I think we all know it's a national issue. And um, I think getting behind this particular issue of compensation and health care for September 11th workers and residents is something that's almost a no-brainer. And we hope that they look at it that way, too. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. And Mr. Stewart, thank you. For thank you. I really appreciate it. Much appreciated. Thank you. Time.